In this video, we will begin with the discussion of the chapter Electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is everywhere. It is important in almost all technological advances in the world because it has everything to do with creating effective forms of solar heating, making electric cars work, and generally doing anything useful that involves energy storage. So the next time you turn on your flashlight, or when you take out the charger to recharge your phone or laptop, stop to think about the extraordinary process involved in making the battery in the first place. In fact, even the sensory signals given from the brain through the cells and from the cells back to the brain are all based on the electrochemical phenomena. So what is electrochemistry? Electrochemistry is the branch of chemistry which deals with the study of the interconversion of electrical energy and the chemical energy. Electrochemistry is when chemical energy is transformed into electrical energy which is then often transformed into another kind of energy such as light or heat. Many spontaneous redox reactions liberate electrical energy and these reactions occur in batteries and fuel cells to produce electricity. Conversely, electrical energy is used to bring about many chemical reactions which are non-spontaneous. Now this process whereby electrical energy is directly converted into chemical energy is called electrolysis. The three main aspects in the study of electrochemistry are electrochemical cells, electrolytic conduction and electrolysis. Let us first talk about electrochemical cells. Now a device used to convert the chemical energy produced in a redox reaction into electrical energy is called electrochemical cell. These are also known as galvanic or Voltaic cells after the names Luigi Galvani and Alessandro Volta who were pioneers in this field. So, how can a redox reaction be used to produce electrical energy? Let us understand this by taking a Daniel cell, which is an electrochemical cell based on the redox reaction between zinc and copper sulfate. So, in a Daniel cell, a zinc rod is dipped in a solution of zinc sulfate taken in a beaker and this forms one half cell. The other half cell is formed by dipping a copper rod in a solution of copper sulfate taken in another beaker. The zinc and copper rods are connected to each other by metallic copper wires through a key and voltmeter. The solutions in the two beakers are connected to each other with the help of a salt bridge. Now, a salt bridge is an inverted U-shaped tube containing a concentrated solution of an inert electrolyte like potassium chloride, potassium nitrate, sodium chloride, potassium sulfate and so on. Here, inert electrolyte means that the ions contained by the electrolyte of the salt bridge neither gets discharged nor reacts with the ions of the half cells. The function of the salt bridge is to allow the movement of the ions from one solution to the other without mixing of the two solutions. Whereas electrons flow in the outer circuit through the wire, the inner circuit is completed by the flow of ions from one solution to the other through the salt bridge. Now, if the electrical circuit is completed by pressing the key, we see that the electric current flows in the circuit indicated by the voltmeter. As the current flows in the circuit, the zinc rod loses weight. This is due to the oxidation of zinc. Thus, the concentration of Zn2 plus ions increases in the left-hand side beaker. So, to maintain electrical neutrality, the anions, that is the sulfate ions, from the salt bridge must enter into the half cell to combine with the excess 
Zn2 plus ions that are formed. The copper rod gains weight due to the re reduction of the copper 2 plus ions in the solution. Thus, the concentration of the sulfate ions increases in the right hand side beaker. So, to maintain electrical neutrality, the sulfate ions from this beaker must enter into the salt bridge and combine with the cations, that is the potassium ions in this case. Thus, the salt bridge also helps in maintaining electrical neutrality of the solutions in the two half cells. Now, according to convention, the zinc electrode acts as the anode because oxidation takes place at this electrode and it is taken as the negative electrode because electrons are liberated due to which it attains a negative charge. The copper electrode at which reduction takes place is taken as the cathode by convention because it is accompanied by absorption of electrons by the copper 2 plus ions in the solution from this electrode and thereby it acquires the positive charge. Now on paper, this Daniel cell can be represented as follows. The anode or negative electrode in, is written on the left hand side and indicates the oxidation site that is zinc to Zn2 plus here. The cathode or positive electrode is written on the right hand side and it indicates the reduction site that is copper 2 plus into copper here. The single vertical line indicates the phase boundaries of the electrodes and the double vertical lines represent the salt bridge. The states of each half cell are indicated within the small brackets and the concentration of the ions are also indicated within the small brackets. Now, if an increasing external potential is applied to the cell, then the reaction continues to take place in the cell so long as the external potential is less than the potential of the cell. When the external potential is equal to the cell potential, the reaction stops and the current becomes zero. Now, on further increasing the external potential, the reaction starts again but in the opposite direction which also means that the current now flows in the opposite direction. The cell now acts as an electrolytic cell.